So, support for Windows 10 is finally ending in October of this year. Sort of. Wow, as someone who totally loves Windows 10, I'm really going to miss it. I'm gonna miss you! Boo-ho! 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 Okay, but support isn't exactly ending, and in this video I'm going to show why you shouldn't upgrade to Windows 11, as well as the various options of how to continue using Windows 10, as well as another option you might want to consider. So let's begin with why you shouldn't upgrade to Windows 11. So for years, I was a Windows 7 loyalist, and honestly, if I could still be using that OS today, I probably would. While I don't think Windows 10 was the worst thing to ever happen to Microsoft, I certainly wasn't a fan, especially in the early days, and I don't think a lot of other people were either. I think that if Microsoft hadn't forcibly upgraded users to Windows 10, a lot fewer people would have used it. Well, Windows 11 decided to one-up its predecessor by somehow being even worse. Didn't like ads for games you'd never play in the start menu? Don't worry, now they've just gone straight to having ads in the start menu itself. Don't like the borderline spyware aspects of Windows 10? Well that's even worse than ever on Windows 11. And I hope you're a fan of AI, because Microsoft seems to be trying to force that into every single thing they can recently, including your own computer. And who knows what data of yours they're taking to train their own AI models. Of course, none of this matters if your computer isn't even compatible with Windows 11 in the first place, which is actually quite a few of them. If your computer was made before 2018, it probably won't work on Windows 11. If your computer was made between 2018 and 2022, it might work depending on the specs. And most computers made within the past three years or so should work fine. However, I'm sure you've seen videos advertising how to get Windows 11 working on unsupported computers. And honestly, I'd have to say just avoid those. Why? Well, besides the fact that Windows 11 is awful and should be avoided in general, these methods are very hacked together workarounds. Now look, I'm all for hacky workarounds for modern Microsoft products, but the problem is that Microsoft keeps patching these workarounds. Something that worked today might not work next week. But even worse, I've heard about computers being bricked by Microsoft patching a once stable workaround. That's right, if you use one of the install Windows 11 with unsupported hardware tricks, and Microsoft decides to patch that workaround, your computer could very well just stop working altogether. Even in the best case scenario, a lot of computers that get detected with these sorts of workarounds for installing Windows 11 will be denied Windows updates, at which point you're basically out of support anyway, so the whole point of being on Windows 11 would be... bragging rights? Wow, what an honor, you got to be on the terrible OS that is Windows 11. Lucky you. But don't worry, I'll give you some actual ways on how to stay supported on Windows 10 for a while still, as well as some other options you might want to try out. These vary from entirely official to... less so. Let's begin with... Windows 10 ESU. Now this is an official program Microsoft is launching for the next three years, though admittedly some of the wording makes it a bit questionable as to how long individuals can continue receiving updates, but it will buy you no less than another year from what I can tell. Speaking of buy, this is a paid program. You pay an extra $60 per year, and you get extra updates. Yeah, believe it or not, Microsoft is well aware that people don't want to or simply can't install Windows 11, so they're going to make sure to hold Windows 10 ransom in the process. Now this is the only truly official consumer way to get future updates, and some might be willing to accept this. But now let's dive into some of the... less than official methods. Windows 10 ESU but for free. Yeah, so as it turns out, it was fairly easy to figure out how to bypass the payment requirement for those aforementioned ESU updates. However, I can't confirm if this will work or not, since not only has the program technically not started yet from what I can tell, but this could theoretically get patched by Microsoft. Mind you, the same thing happened when Windows 7 got ESU updates, to which Microsoft just never bothered doing anything about it, so maybe they just don't care if people bypass it. Windows 10 Enterprise. Whoa, Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. What's that? 
Well, it's basically Windows 10, but for enterprises, specifically ones looking for long-term support. Okay, look, I know you're not an enterprise or an enterprise user, probably. However, aside from the benefits of the Enterprise Edition not having as much bloat pre-installed on it, there's the fact that's important for this discussion. Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 21H2 is getting updated until January of 2027, with the IoT Enterprise version getting updates until all the way in 2032. But wait, 21H2 is technically an older version of Windows 10 compared to 22H2, so most people won't be able to use this right away. Luckily, it seems to be as simple as tricking the installer into thinking you're running a 21H2 version of Windows, which should also allow you to keep all of your files. Honestly, I think this is the best method, even if it still technically requires workarounds, since it's really quick to do and offers you over half a decade of extra updates. Now, there is one caveat. Technically, you're supposed to have a Windows 10 IoT Enterprise key for this, now, supposedly buying these keys from CD key sellers is actually legal, so you could spend a bit of money doing that. Or, of course, there's the obvious high seas method, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, time for one more option. Linux. Now, for those who weren't scared away by the mere mention of Linux, the big question is this. Is Linux ready for most users? Now, I personally recommend Linux Mint, and honestly, I think the answer is... Yes, for the most part. Unfortunately, it still has rough areas, mainly with compatibility. Most games work fine on Linux now, some even out of the box. So let's do a simple exercise to determine whether you're good to go on Linux. Do you play popular online multiplayer games that have intrusive anti-cheat on your computer? Fortnite is the easy example here. If so, you might want to hold off then. Though that's not really anyone's fault besides Epic's, since they're scared of people using an OS that isn't Windows to play their game for some reason. This basically goes for any of those multiplayer games that have that intrusive anti-cheat. Easy anti-cheat and stuff like that. Hopefully they'll fix this soon, but for now you might want to wait just in case. Next, do you use video editing programs like Vegas Pro or DaVinci Resolve? Yeah, you still might want to wait then. And okay, I know technically DaVinci Resolve has a Linux version, but it really needs some work since not only is it cumbersome to install, but it lacks so many incredibly basic codecs that it's almost not worth using unless you install the Windows version on Linux, which doesn't work out of the box just yet. And finally, do you use Adobe products? Like, officially use them, paying for the subscription and all. If so... <laughs> yeah, that one's entirely on you for paying a monthly rent for Adobe software. Ironically, I'm pretty sure most pirated versions of that same software works nearly perfectly on Linux. The only other big issue I can think of with using Linux is the actual switching process. Since there's no real migration tool, you have to transfer your files manually, as well as manually install or reinstall many of the programs you want to use, which can be tedious, so I'd understand why some people would be turned away by that. Also, as a quick aside, as a Linux user base has grown, some have started to lament the fact that many programs, even ones that officially support Linux, are basically just the Windows version with wine pasted on. This is doubly the case for Steam's push for Proton support on games. The argument is that by doing this instead of getting native Linux versions, it instead entrenches Windows into being the default. Honestly though, I think this line of thinking is really stupid. I think a lot of developers, even those who would only otherwise develop for Linux, would still gladly just make a Windows version and then put Wine on top of that, and honestly, oh no, it's 1% slower. How horrible. Also, let me rephrase the argument from before to show just how ridiculous it is with a historical example. Instead of getting native Windows versions, the practice of just releasing programs as DOS executables that run under Windows will just entrench DOS into being the default. Yeah, I think people forgot that many programs were made to basically be over-glorified DOS programs until the 2000s, when Windows XP, mostly, got rid of that practice by force. But hey, I guess no one ever used the 9X series, huh? Because a lot of programs could just run on DOS, right? 
Also, I still think it would be a hilarious twist if Windows only survives as remnants of reverse engineered Wine and Proton code. Sure, people still technically code Windows programs and games, but only because that's the easiest way to do things, and it's been that way for decades, but most people will just run it through Wine anyway. I honestly think that would be the most hilarious bit of irony for the fate of Windows. Now then, do I plan on using Linux? Well, not yet. And that's mainly because of one program, that being DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully someday, whether through better codec support or simply being able to run the Windows version in Linux, I'll be able to use DaVinci Resolve and therefore switch to Linux. I will say, however, that I'm still really impressed at how Linux could play nearly every single game I tried to throw at it, most times even directly out of the box. Seriously, the only major games that I can think of that can't run on Linux are the ones being deliberately handicapped by their developers to prevent them from doing so. I seriously think Linux is close to being my standard operating system, and for most people who want to get away from Windows, it could very easily be used. Well, those are the options for what happens at the end of Windows 10 support cycle. It's a shame that Microsoft is forcing this sort of thing to begin with, what with how awful Windows 11 is, and the fact that they're clearly capable of keeping Windows 10 updates going. Microsoft is basically creating a waste problem, all for what? So that they can show off to investors, look how many users of our new garbage there are. It's really quite annoying that Windows just keeps getting worse and worse, and I honestly just hope that Linux catches up soon so that we can finally ditch Windows. Oh, right, I guess I forgot to mention Mac, which, uh... <laughs> Seriously, imagine picking worse program compatibility compared to Linux from even several years ago, along with the locked-in model Microsoft investors daydream about. I don't think there's much of any reason to use a Mac aside from ease of use. By means of a bunch of things not even being compatible to begin with, and also don't you dare go outside the rails ever. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that one. Well, that's all for now. Thank y'all for watching, and take care. I remember when they first released Windows 10. I always hated it!